Unified Protect Update 5.3.38 and I feel like it's been a little while since I've done one of these so let's have a look at some of the improvements and what's new within the latest version of Unified Protect and there are a couple of updates that a lot of you have been waiting for that we're going to be seeing. If we jump down this list we have a new hallway mode which basically flips the camera to a 90 degree angle and you can see it in a more of a vertical mode rather than a horizontal mode. There's now API support to allow seamless integration with other systems. There's a video only mode. So basically what that does is it records just the video on the footage but if you're viewing a live, you can hear the audio as well. You now have the ability to set multiple conditions to trigger an alarm. So previously it used to be one trigger to one alarm. Now you can make sure it meets multiple conditions before that alarm gets triggered. There's an option to trigger an alarm with an external webhook. There's now a 24 hour timeline in the find me section. There's options to highlight detected camera motion on the dashboard. So that's the little white box that you'll probably see coming up around where there's motion. You can now adjust the doorbell volume depending on how loud you want it. We have the next AI summary and AI key setting. There's the option to download recordings from the camera's internal storage and we'll have a look at that just shortly and they've renamed edge recording to internal storage. So I'm going to have a quick look through some of these updates and see what's good and what's not. But just before we do, there's some updated versions for the camera, the AI port and the AI key. With the latest update of the AI port, it now supports five HD cameras, four 2K cameras and two 4K cameras. These are ubiquity cameras. If you have an OMVIF, there is still only a one-to-one -one mapping. The AI key update, there's some next AI summaries and event descriptions, so they've added support in there. A good update here is events generated before adopting the AI keys. Previously, you could only see what it's found after you've adopted the AI key, it's now gonna be able to go back through and see what you have as well. And there's a few improvements for face and LPR detection and the search user experience. In terms of the camera update, I think I went through them already. So, I mean, we've added custom ringtones now. We have improved AI detection when infrared is activated and improved facial recognition accuracy. Let's start with the big one first, which is the AI port. So if we drop down here, you'll see there's now an option for the AI port. Now I am using one OMVIF camera. I do have the AI key so I can adopt them on them. But what actually happens is when you go to paired cameras now, you can untick and then you can tick multiple others. Now you can see my G5 Ultra, the G5 turret, the bullet, the G4 Instant and the front door is all being enhanced with the AI key. So it's not allowing me the option to select them. But if there are any others, so we have one here. Unfortunately, I don't have any others that I can select at this point, but it will allow you to select multiple cameras. In terms of knowing how much capacity you've used, it says it right here. So we have like we see on the Unified Protect consoles, we see the capacity, you can see that right here. So you know how many you've got adopted. Next, we'll look at the hallway support. And if you click on the camera itself and go to settings and image tuning, you will actually see, you will actually see at the bottom right here, which is something called hallway mode. So we can enable hallway mode and that just quickly, I believe it reboots the camera before it comes back again. It does a 90 degree rotation. It then does a 916 ratio. And there you go, that's now done, that's rebooted. We now have that in a 90 degree ratio. And if you wanna turn that off, you just simply unclick hallway mode and it will go back and reboot and sort itself out. For the recording manager, in terms of the video only, you can see where we have the microphone option. It says disable when recording. And what that will do is then, as I mentioned, it would disable the audio while it's being recorded. But if you were to view in a live view, you now have the option you can actually still hear the audio. A couple of alarm manager updates. So we can go and create a new alarm and I'll quickly show you this. So this is where it allows you to have multiple triggers. So we have known faces and you can click and so and a license plate of known vehicles. And the other one that I mentioned was the external webhook. So now we can go to system. So rather than the action just being a webhook, we can now use a trigger and we can go and tick this button and it allows you to put some webhooks in there as well. With some of the smart detection zones previously, if you go to edit zone and you had a quick look on, if you went to edit zone and you had a look at the camera and you looked at some of the settings within, you would normally see the smart zones. You could only add either the de detection type or loitering. Now this has now been combined and you can actually add them both together. So you can do it all under one smart detection zone. You don't need to create multiple zones for both loitering 
and any other detections. Within the AI key, you now have the 24 hour timeline where you can type in a start date and end date or an even time. And that allows you to search within a certain period of time if you're looking for something specific. And the last one I'm gonna show you right here is being able to download footage from the SD card. So if we go to the AI turret, which has an SD card slot in it, you can scroll down to the bottom and you can see the internal storage. So, so previously we had manage and unmount. We now have download where you can go ahead and select the footage that you want and download it straight from the SD card. That pretty much wraps up what's there in Unify Protect 5.3. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite feature is. For me, it's definitely the AI port that's the biggest update for me. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.